What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for Lines.com, PlayPicks.com. Going to talk to you about Monday Night Football between the Falcons and the Packers. Guys, before we get started, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the channel. Everything we do is free here at the Lines channel, website, everything like that. So really appreciate the support. Give us a thumbs up. And then also let us know in the comments how you're going to play this game tonight. Um, some pretty big news that we're going to get to here in just one second that just came out literally as I started to film this video, Monday Night Football, Falcons, and the Packers. We're going to take a look at these lines as it sits right this second. Six and a half um, in favor of the Packers over here on DraftKings. 57 being the total over here on FanDuel. Six and 56 and a half. And then over here on BetMGM, we can see it is at six, 56 and a half as well over here. I'll click here. So if you want to read along with the preview, you can. Um, so the big news, Devontae Adams practiced Thursday, practiced Friday, looked like everything was going to be, uh, going his way and getting him into this game. He has just put out that he is not going to play on Monday night. So no Devontae Adams. And if you missed this, no Alan Lazard either for the Packers, he is injured. So now you're talking about a, a number one wide receiver, for Green Bay in Marquez Valdez-Scantling. He is going to have to be the number one wide receiving target there for the Packers against, don't get me wrong, a very putrid, a very bad uh, Falcons defense and Falcons secondary. But nonetheless, you are now down your number one and your number two options if you're Aaron Rodgers in this. On the other hand, for Matt Ryan, he got the best news possible as it comes out this morning. Again, this is not confirmed. We're doing this on Monday morning. And, of course, the official injury reports don't come out until 90 minutes before game time. But all indications from the beat writers is that not only will Julio Jones go, but also he will. Uh, you'll have Russell Gage in there as well coming back from the concussion. You'll also have Calvin Ridley. So all three of the wide receivers there for the Falcons will be able to to give it a go for the team. So, uh, again, big news on the wide receiver front, on the playmaker front from both sides here. It looks like the Falcons will have a full complement of guys, and it looks as if that, uh, and it looks as if the Packers are going to be down their top two options here. I'll scroll a little bit further. We'll get going. On the offensive side of the ball, Falcons offense, as you would imagine, good. Pass blocking actually seventh by pro football focus. Um, run blocking, not so much, but, hell, they haven't been running the ball that much anyway because they've been – passing they have to pass because they have to play catch up here so often um third down conversion rate about middle of the pack 16th actually exactly middle of the pack 43 percent of the time they're converting third downs and so if you have an offense that is as potent as this and is actually staying on the field and moving the chains which they're doing you know at a, at a decent little clip here um which is what makes them so dangerous which is why they continue to put up so many points on the board which is why it's always a scary team to fade when it comes down to it, because they are all, uh, they are always putting a, a ton of points on the board and putting up a ton of yardage as well. Uh, on the Packers side of things, and again, this changes now with the situation. I'll scroll a little bit further if you want to continue to read along. Number one ranked pass blocking unit, number third ranked run blocking unit by Pro Football Focus. Their offense, pass offense, fifth DBOA, their rush offense, fourth DBOA. So they have been very, very good in this small sample size. Third down conversion percentage, 50%. That's fifth in the NFL. Offense, again, efficient, clicking. Um, Aaron Rodgers has looked like his old self as well. And so that's one of the things I think that is, is really big about this game. Aaron Rodgers has looked so incredibly good. On the defensive side of the ball, I don't really need to tell you about the Falcons. It's really just more about the collapses. If you look at the advanced stats, they're not terrible, terrible. Like, Rush defense by Pro Football Focus, 16th. Pass defense, 17th. Coverage grade, uh, I, mean, I mean, pass rush rank, 17th. Uh, pa coverage grade, sitting in the, in the, in the kind of like the 12th-ish range. Uh, DVOA defense, 17th. Um, so you kind of look and you're like, what, what's going on here? And it's really just a c bad coaching decisions and, and how they're going about late-game situations. But, again, the uh, underlying statistics does not have them down as like one of the very, very worst in the league. They are giving up a ton of yards, however. 
on the Packers side, the defense has actually not been all that great. And we'll go ahead and start to look at these these odds a little bit more here. Um, rush defense, 16th, pro football focus, pass rush, 20th, um, pass defense, DVOA, 20th, rush defense, DVOA, 27th. So the defense has actually been giving it up pretty good. And if you look at their how much yards per play they give up and how much uh, success rate they're giving up with their with, with, through the air and on the ground, it's actually pretty bad. And so the Falcons team that's been rolling should be able to put up um, some yards as well. So let's go here and talk about the total and make a case for the over. A case for the over is that the Falcons score a ton of points in every single game and conversely are kind enough to give the other team a ton of points as well. Whenever you take a look at this Falcons team over the course of over, over the course of the season, what we've seen is they get out, they play well early, they get out to leads and then they continue repeatedly for whatever reason to blow the games. And you you take a look at the Falcons so far and they have scored 25 points in a loss, 39 points in a loss, 26 points in a loss. So whenever you see here why this totals up at 57 well because they gave up 38 to the Seahawks they gave up 40 to the Cowboys they gave up 30 to the Bears yes the Bears they gave up 32 so think about what you saw from the Bears this past week so now Aaron Rodgers comes to town and um you know you're gonna have this uh you're gonna have this high-powered offense from the Falcons that's gonna put up their share and then give it up to them as well. If you want to play the under here, I think this really has changed a lot in the past, you know, few minutes since we talked here. Um, it looked like Devontae Adams was going to go for the Packers. So, hey, yeah, it sucks Alan Lazard was going to be out, but at least you have your number one option. MVS, uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling moves into that number two role. You still use Aaron Jones out of the backfield. He's been catching a ton of passes. Uh, and so, you know, you still have some semblance of the offense. Now with Devontae Adams out, Alan Lazard out. Um, now you start to wonder, are they going to be able to move the ball as effectively here? Marquez Valdez Scantling was, let's not remember, this was the guy they wanted to be the guy. He wanted, they wanted this guy to be a, huge for them. And instead, he couldn't even, he could never win the second, the wide receiver two position. He couldn't beat out a, a bevy of guys and was always the third or fourth option. And now he's going to have to be the primary option in this game tonight against the Falcons. Now, again, Falcons defense has been poor, but. Sometimes guys are meant to be ones. Guys are meant to be twos. Sometimes guys are threes. Really hard for a two or a three to become a one. You know, I think we're seeing that play out in Houston right now with Will Fuller and, and those crew, Randall Cobb and whatnot. And I think we're Brandon Cooks. And I think we're kind of seeing uh, that could be the case here for the Packers tonight. So again, on the underside of things would just be the fact that the Packers aren't able to do what the other three opponents of the Falcons have done so far this year and put up a ton of points on the scoreboard and light up the board because of the deficiencies they're having with the injuries. So, which is just unfortunate, but a, a case that we're going to have to deal with tonight on the player prop side of things can only imagine as we scroll down here, these things are going to have been pulled off the board with the news. But, um, so as we look, yeah, you know, you see down here receiving yards, they've, they've pulled most. It's only Gurley and Gage that are actually listed here. Maybe we can find some player props that are still on the board over here at FanDuel, and we do, but they have jacked up Aaron Jones. So I, that was going to be the one thing that I was going to try and see if we could take advantage of was Aaron Jones receiving yards with Devontae Adams being out. What we have what we've seen is Aaron Jones been a huge part of the passing game already so far this year anyway, but I can only imagine more reliance on Aaron Jones, more check down plays, more designed plays to get the ball in his hands. Now, 38 and a half, I kind of had him projected more in the mid 30s as far as the receiving yards go um, as a tick up. I kind of had him in the high 20s, low 30s with Devontae Adams being in there. So, obviously, I give him an extra catch, maybe move him up five or six yards. So, that still puts him more in that 35, 36, 37 range. 38 and a half is a big number for Aaron Jones, even if I do think that he's going to be a part. So, uh, pretty interesting. So, keep a, keep an eye on this, guys, throughout the course of the day. Monitor this and see where it ends up whenever they actually repost something at DraftKings. Do they have anything over here on MGM just, just in case? No. So, same deal. They have pulled everybody off of receiving yards except for Gurley 
engage here. If this thing comes back, if, you know, let's say MGM puts up a number in the high 20s, we're going to play the over on that thing. If uh, same deal at DraftKings, if they come back, put up something in the high 20s on on uh, on Aaron Jones, we're going to play the, play the over. If they come back and put up something egregious like mid 40s or 50s or something because they think that's going to happen, um, we're going to play the under. So just keep an, eye, keep an eye on that and monitor that and see what they do with that situation. That's going to create a bunch of opportunity for him, but not so much where he's now, you know, don't let them post a number that – that I, we're just going to automatically bet the over on because that's just not uh, how this works. And that's not how we win money. So we're not going to do that either. Um, with this situation, depending on game flow and how you think this is going to go, um, is really going to be how you go about playing Aaron Rodgers now. Um, with with Devontae Adams being out, obviously it's going to be much harder to pass the ball. That said, do you think there's a chance that this Falcons team does what it's done this year and just get out to the lead? And if so, it takes away the run game from the Packers. So you kind of got to tell yourself a story and then you have to make your props align with that story. And if you think that they're going to have to abandon the run and go to the pass early and often, then you might even look for, you might look to the over even with it being um, without the receivers out there. Because if you just throw volume, sometimes is enough to get it over the total. But um I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that they'll still try to run the ball a lot. Well, as long as they can until they can't do it anymore. So um, if you take a look, let's see what his Aaron Rodgers passing total is over here. So it's 286 at FanDuel. You can see 289 over here. And they have pulled his passing yards over here at MGM because of the Devontae Adams news. So um, if anything, it would be under it would be under 289 for me, if anything, but not a strong play because again, I think this thing could get out of hand and he might have to get to the uh, the pass game a little bit sooner. So I think this is pretty evident at this point, guys. I was kind of leaning towards the Falcons anyway, getting these points um, against this uh, Packers team. Now with this scenario that we are playing into, with the Packers having to uh, get this done with really the B squad on the receiving side of things. I think the Falcons can keep this thing within a touchdown. So uh, I have taken the six and a half as soon as that news kind of came across here. Um, Would have been interesting. I think the Packers are probably going to be already tied into a bunch of people's teaser legs here. So I don't know if they'll try to come in and double dip or, or anything like that. But um, you can see, even as we did that, it just flashed there was getting juiced on the six and a half here. Now back to one ten on both sides. People taking the six and a half with the Falcons. Um, look, if the defense just plays a little bit better against this B squad of a wide receiving core, Aaron Jones is going to get his. Don't get me wrong. Aaron and Aaron Rodgers is going to get his as well. But this uh, this offense is dynamic for this Falcons team. I think they're going to be able to continue to put the ball across the uh, across the goal line, and so. Yeah, definitely like that. And as we see, as you can see, I mean, this number is now, I mean, the m- money is coming in on the Falcons. Look, this is six now juiced to 115 over here at FanDuel. So uh, people don't like the fact that he is going to be without, that Aaron Rodgers is going to be without his main weapon um, in Devontae Adams. So took the six and a hook over here on the Falcons. Feel pretty good about it. Um, and maybe Aaron Rodgers will go out there and prove us wrong. Hopefully not. But uh, we'll be rooting. We'll be Falcons fans uh, tonight on this one. All right, guys. Uh, appreciate you watching the video. As always, give us a give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section how you plan on playing the game. Do you think him being without Lazard and Adams is going to be too much for this Packers team to overcome? Do you think the Falcons can finally put all of this nonsense on the defensive side of the ball behind them and hold on to one of these leads that they build? Um, also, uh, give us a give us a subscribe as well. Really do appreciate you helping us us. Uh, support the channel and everything we do is free at the lines as well. So be sure and head over there. If you live in any of the states that uh, you have legal sports betting, just click on any state along here and you can see that you get like the absolute very best odds. I mean, be- very best deals for signing up for sports books. I mean, free money, free bets, free everything. So uh, be sure and do that along the way as well. Good luck on all your best tonight, guys.